Hello beautiful people, welcome to another video. As you can see, this vintage school desk is incredibly damaged and stained, but I've always wanted to work on one of these, so I decided to give it a go. There is probably every type of stain on this desk that you can think of, including ink, markers, stickers, tape, chewing gum, and unfortunately probably some boogers. But I like a challenge, so I decided to do it. Before I begin, if you guys can just hit the subscribe button and like the video if you do like it, that helps me tremendously and I will really appreciate it. Also wanted to say a quick thank you for everyone who buys me coffees or gifts through Amazon wishlist. That's super nice of you and I'm very grateful for that. Anyhow, but let's start with the video. So I wanted to take the legs off this desk and completely disassemble it, but the screws were completely seized and whatever I tried I could not get the screws out. One of them actually broke as I was trying to get it out so I just left them because it wasn't necessary actually to take the legs off. I also used some clamps to put the piece that was in the front of the desk back into its original shape because it was slightly bent. And I used my really cool Parkside screwdriver to take all the screws out and disassemble the desk. I've had loads of messages from you guys asking me where you could buy that screwdriver. And this is sold at Lidl, which is a store here in the UK and also in many other countries in Europe. But for all of you guys who really want to buy one, I know you can buy this on eBay for a little more money, about £25. So the best way to get rid of the stains is to use oxalic acid and this is what woodworkers use typically. And I actually bought some on Amazon but for whatever reason the shipment was really late and I didn't get it in time so I had to try other ways to get the look that I wanted. This desk was put together using screws and some nails and it was made from plywood and pieces of solid wood which I believe was birch. I was very careful not to damage the plywood as I was taking it apart. There was a small piece of wood that chipped off as I was taking the desk apart so I used some glue and I clamped it together. There was also a gap between two pieces of wood that split and again I used some wood glue and I clamped it together and let it dry. Seasoned woodworkers would probably cringe seeing me do this because those pieces are still screwed to the legs but as I said I couldn't take them apart so that was the only way I could do it. Sometimes you just do what you have to do. Anyhow, I used my sandblaster to remove the paint from the metal bits and the hinges that the top of the desk was attached to the rest of it. When I was done sandblasting, I used liquid sander, which is kind of what the name says it is, to get rid of as much dirt and stains as I was able to. It didn't do an amazing job, but it did actually get rid of some of the stains. Not sure if it's as good as oxalic acid or if it actually works in a similar way, but it did help a little bit. If you do use this, you need to make sure to rinse your uh, pieces thoroughly with water. 
Now you can see me cleaning the hinges with some white spirit as I'm getting it ready for the primer. I applied two coats of primer and I let it dry. As I mentioned before, you need to wipe off the sander with some water, so that's what I did. I basically threw everything I had at this piece, including my kitchen sink. So you will see me sanding and scraping and using bleach and liquid sander and oxalic acid eventually when I did get some, just to get rid of all the stains. And let me just say, I'm not gonna show you the whole process because it would take you a week to watch it, but it was a lot of work and I didn't manage to get all of the stains out. I wanted to keep the name of the company that made this desk, so I was careful to sand around it. Did I mention there was a lot of scraping and sanding and bleaching and cleaning? <laughs> yes, there was a lot of it. Because the damage on the top of the desk was so extensive, I used my belt sander to help me chew through all the scratches and holes and paint and everything that was on it. Talk about that huge burn hole in the top. So this was obviously a really difficult one and I had several options. I could simply replace the top with a different piece of wood, which I didn't want to do because this desk was old and I wanted to keep it kind of rustic. I didn't want to make it brand new because I could have painted the whole thing if I wanted to, but that was not the point. The other option was to cover it with something or I could just fill the hole with wood putty or something else and try to color match it, which would be very difficult to do. The damage and the stains were so bad that I decided to try paint stripper on top of everything that I've done already, because why not? It didn't do much, but it did remove this little splash of white paint on the edge that you can see. <laughs> That's about all it did. But I didn't give up and I continued sanding and using all the products that I had at my disposal. As I was working on the rest of the desk, I was going over all the options that I had in my mind as far as what I could do with the top.
I used some wood glue and sawdust to fill in gaps and I also tried some wood putty that was in a color closely matching the color of the wood. I spray painted that metal piece that was on the front of the desk with gold leaf. I waited for it to dry and I applied some clear coat. Next I applied pre-stain to all the wooden pieces and got them ready for the stain. Pre-stain makes the application of stain even and it's especially helpful if you have a piece that's made of more than one type of wood or you're not sure what type of wood you're dealing with. I decided to go for a darker color on the inside of the desk that would help me to hide some of the imperfections and I used Dixie Bell's No Paint Gel Stain in Walnut. In my mind, working on old furniture pieces is like dealing with human beauty. You can age gracefully or you can have a plastic surgery and have a facelift and completely redo your look. There is nothing wrong with either one and there is place for both, but when I work on vintage pieces I like to leave some of the age-related marks so people can see what the furniture has been through and that it can tell a story. As I'm talking, you can see me apply walnut veneer. I did the first bit and then the second one and I didn't care about making sure that the first and the second one were aligned properly just because of what's going to happen next. Now I'm just using my jig that I made for my jigsaw to trim off the excess veneer on the edges before I sanded it. After all that cleaning and sanding I'm actually doing something fun. I'm using a large square as a guide for my router to cut a groove into the top of the desk and inlay a piece of brass that I purchased at the local hardware store. I used some sandpaper and barkeeper's friend to clean the brass and I cut it to size with my Dremel tool. This was actually not as difficult as I thought. I basically used a routing bit that was the size of the width of the inlay and I used my router with a plunging feature to set the depth to the thickness of the inlay and that's it. And when that was ready, I used some CA glue to glue the brass piece in place. I put the desk back together and I used golden pine water-based wood stain to give the desk some color.
Using a paint sprayer to apply water-based wood stain is incredibly simple and if you haven't tried it, try it. When I was done with that, I applied some walnut edge banding using my iron. This is super simple, you apply some heat and the glue that's already on the strip dissolves and adheres to the surface. Then I use some sandpaper to smooth the edges and get rid of the excess glue. And I applied some Danish oil to the veneer. This is so nice to watch. I love seeing the grain come alive. And especially with the brass in the middle, it just looks amazing. When this was finished, I put the top back onto the desk and I waxed the inside of it and everywhere else. This desk was missing an inkwell, so I purchased one on Amazon and this was hand painted and looked really cool and vintage. Thank you so much for watching and have a look at some staged pictures. See you in the next video.